Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Vintage NASCAR Owners, Elmo Langley. Elmo Langley began his NASCAR career in 1952, racing modifieds in Virginia. Then in 1954, he made the move to NASCAR as an owner-driver. So in 1954, he made his first of two starts in the NASCAR Grand National Series, now NASCAR Cup Series. His best finish was 12th in the fall at Darlington. He also made one start at Lancaster, finishing 59th. He was driving a number 53 Oldsmobile. In 1955, Langley made two starts in a number 53 Oldsmobile. His best start was 12th in the spring at Richmond, and his best finish was 8th in the summer at Richmond. Over the next couple seasons, he only made one start apiece, then a number 81 Chevrolet at Darlington in the fall, starting 42nd and finishing 19th in 1956. And in 1957, he made one start at New Oxford in a number 8 Chevrolet, starting 19th and finishing 11th. Then, in 1958, Langley Racing made seven starts with Elmo behind the wheel of his own number 8 Chevrolet. His best start was ninth in the fall in Richmond. His best finish was fifth at Old Bridge. Overall, he scored one top five and three top tens. L.D. Austin made one start in 1958 also in the number 8 Chevrolet. At Weaverville, starting 34th and finishing 22nd. Now, following the 1958 NASCAR season, Langley Racing didn't make another start till 1962. Now, finally, in 1962, Langley Racing returned to the NASCAR Cup Series. He made three starts, with his best start being seventh in the fall at Richmond, and his best finish, with his best finish being sixteenth in the fall at Darlington. This being Elmo Langley. Now, that following season, in 1963, Langley Racing made seven starts. It didn't with Elmo behind the wheel of a number 64 Ford. His best start was 8th, and his best finish was 5th, both coming in the summer at Manassas. The team did not make any starts in 1964. Langley Racing returned in 1965, making 32 starts out of 55 races throughout the NASCAR season. In his number 64 Ford. His best start was 3rd in the fall at Manassas. His best finish was 3rd twice. In the spring at Hampton and in the fall at Spartanburg. Overall, he scored three top fives and nine top tens, finishing 25th in final points. Now, several drivers made one and two off starts for the team. Buddy Arrington, Buddy Baker, Daryl Derringer, Elmer Gallion, Hop Holmes, Jack Ingram, Bud Moore, Burt Robbins, and Daniel Warwick. Now, from, from 66 through the beginning of 69, Langley Racing was merged with Henley Woodfield, making Langley Woodfield Racing. Langley Racing returned in 1969. And in 69, Langley Racing made 49 starts with Elmo Langley behind the wheel of his number 64 Ford. His best start was third in the spring at Atlanta and Bellsville. His best finish was third in the spring at Richmond. Overall, in 49 starts, he scored thir 13 top fives and 27 top tens. They finished 5th in final points. A couple other drivers made one-off starts for the team. Larry Hess, Clyde Lynn, J.D. McDuffie, and Dub Simpson. They finished all in the 20s. The 1970 NASCAR season had Elmo Langley making 47 starts, with his best start being 4th in the fall at Dover. His best finish was 3rd in the spring at Richmond. Overall, he scored... Nine top ten, nine top fives, and nineteen top tens, finishing sixth in final points. John Sears made two starts for the team. His best start was thirteenth, and his best finish was seventeenth twice in the spring at Daytona and Richmond. Bill Seifert made one start for the team in the summer at Bristol, making starting twenty-first and finishing thirtieth. There was the nineteen seventy-one season, and once again Langley Racing was on the racetrack competing in the NASCAR Grand National Series. Elmo made 39 starts. His best start was second twice in the spring at Asheville and in the fall at Hickory. His best finish was second, also twice in the spring at Asheville and in the fall at Hickory. Overall, he scored 9 top 5s and 20 top 10s, finishing 5th in final points. Clyde Lynn made one start at North Wilkesboro in the spring. He started 23rd and finished 28th. Dick May also made 4 starts for the team in a number 64 Mercury. His best start was 16th in the fall at Trenton. 
and his best finish was 23rd at Malta. That next season was a big change for the NASCAR series. R.J. Reynolds began sponsoring the Premier Series, making it a NASCAR Winston Cup Series. It also changed the point system, as well as shortening the schedule from roughly 50 races a season down to roughly 30 races a season. Langley made 30 starts in 1972. His best start was 5th in the spring at Richmond. Then his best finish was 5th in the fall at Nashville Fairgrounds. Overall, he scored 1 top 5 and 9 top 10s, finishing 7th in final points. Dick May made one start for the team. He started 16th and finished 10th in the summer at Riverside. In 1973, the only driver to make a start for Langley Racing was Elmo Langley himself. He did DNQ for the Daytona 500, but he qualified for all 27 other races in 73. His best start was 12th twice, in the spring at Dover, then Atlanta. His best finish was 7th at Riverside in the spring. Overall, he scored 4 top 10s, finishing 9th in final points. Things got a little more spread out for Langley Racing in 1974. Elmo Langley made 21 NASCAR Cup Series starts. His best start was 9th in Richmond in the spring. His best finish was 6th in Richmond in the fall. Overall, he scored 3 top 10s and finished 25th in final points. Three drivers made one-off starts for the team. Tony Bettenhouse Jr., Dave Marcus, and Dick May, with Bettenhouse Jr. scoring the highest finish with 14th in the summer at Daytona. When the 1975 NASCAR Cup Series season started, Elmo Langley began the year with two straight top five finishes. Though Elmo skipped the Daytona 500, Langley made 27 starts in his number 60, 64 Ford. His best start was ninth twice at both Richmond races. His best finish was 5th twice in the spring at Riverside and Richmond. Overall, he scored 2 top 5s and 7 top 10s, finishing 8th in final points. This would end up being the final time Langley Racing would ever finish inside the top 10 in final point standings. Phil Champion and Tommy Gale each made a one-off start for the team. Gale scored the best finish of the two, 23rd in the summer at Daytona. Elmo Langley began making less and less starts, but letting other drivers make starts for Langley Racing. For the first time ever, Langley was not the driver to make the most starts for the team. That was Tommy Gale. Gale made 11 starts in a number 64 Stanley Barbecue Ford. His best start was 22nd in the spring at Darlington, and his best finish was 15th in the spring at Rockingham. Langley made 7 starts for the team in his number 64 Stanley Barbecue Ford. His best start was 18th in the spring at Martinsville, and his best finish was 10th in the spring at Richmond. This would end up being the final top 10 finish of Langley's NASCAR Cup Series career. Skip Manning and Ed Negra both made one start apiece. Manning scored the best finish 21st in the fall at North Wicksboro. That next year, in 1977, Tommy Gale once again made the most starts out of any other driver for Langley Racing, making 18. In, in the number 64, Sonny King Ford. His best start was 11th in the fall of Darlington, and his best finish was 14th in the summer at Talladega. Elmo Langley made four starts. His best start was 16th in the summer at Nashville Fairgrounds. His best finish was 16th twice in the, in the spring at Bristol and in the fall at Martinsville. Dick Brooks also made a couple starts. His best finish was 12th in the spring at Riverside. Dean Dalton and Henley Gray both made one start apiece. Gray scored the best finish of the two, finishing 14th in the spring at North Wilkesboro. Langley Racing continued to put cars on the racetrack in the NASCAR Cup Series in 1978. Tommy Gale made the vast majority of the starts for the team, 25. His best start was 15th in the spring at Richmond, and his best finish was 13th in the fall at Darlington. He ended up finishing 20th in final points. Dick Brooke made three starts. His best finish was 14th in the spring at Nashville Fairgrounds. Elmo Langley made one start at Nashville Fairgrounds in the summer, starting 25th and finishing 16th. For the 1979 NASCAR Cup Series season, Tommy Gale ran full-time, and he was behind the wheel of number 64, Sonny King Ford and Honda Ford. His best start was 14th at College Station, and his best finish was 7th in the spring at Talladega. Overall, they scored one top 10 and 18th final points. Elmo Langley Made one. Let's start for the team at Riverside in the summer.
starting 27th and finishing 35th. A brand new de decade, the 1980s, and Langley Racing Free remained a consistent figure in the sport. Tommy Gale was behind the wheel of the number 64 of Sunny King Ford and Honda Ford, full time. His best start was 14th twice in the spring at Bristol and Arlington. His best finish was 11th in the fall Talladega. They ended up finishing the season in 1980 16th in final points. The team only had 5 DNFs all season long, which was much better than they typically have, which was normally around 10 or more of a season. Then in 1981, the team of Langley Racing brought Tommy Gale back to drive for 26 races. His best start was 15th in the spring at College Station, and his best, start, best finish was 11th in the spring at Talladega. They finished 16th final points again. Once again, Langley signed Tommy Gale to drive his number 64 Ford full-time for yet another season. His best start was 20th twice in the summer at Nashville Fairgrounds, then in the fall at Martinsville. His best finish was 11th in the spring at Rockingham. The team finished 22nd in final points. Mark Stahl made one start in the number 64 at Sunny King Ford at Riverside in the fall, starting 33rd and finishing 34th. So, in 1983, Tommy Gale returned to Langley Racing's number 64 Ford full-time for the final season. His best start was 13th in the spring at Atlanta. His best finish was 10th in the fall at Rockingham. Unfortunately, the team was hurt points-wise with 15 D in DNFs in 29 races in the 83 season. D.K. Ulrich made two starts for Langley, with his best finish coming in the spring at Martinsville, 13th. There was a change for the team in 1984, with Tommy Gale only making 16 starts behind the wheel of the number 64 Ford. His best start was 25th twice in the spring at Natural Fairgrounds in Dover. His best finish was 11th in the summer at Bristol. Now, Kenny Schrader made his NASCAR Cup Series debut in the summer at Natural Fairgrounds behind the wheel of the number 64 Sunny King Ford and Honda Ford. In five starts that season, Schrader's best start was 23rd in the fall in Atlanta, then his best finish was 17th in the fall at North Wilkesboro. Jimmy Hensley also made four starts for the team. His best start was 22nd in the fall at Martinsville. There, his best finish was 20th in the spring at Martinsville. Clark Dwyer made two starts for Langley as well in 84. Gary Medea made one start, finishing 37th Riverside in the spring. Joe Milliken made one start at Rockingham in the fall, starting 35th and finishing 17th. As a NASCAR Cup Series worked their way through the 1985 season, it was beginning. It was becoming more and more clear that perhaps the team was nearing the end of its existence, at least its competitive existence. All season, they didn't finish on the lead lap one single time. Langley signed Clark Dwyer to drive the number 64 full-time. His best start was 17th in the spring at Dover. And his best finish was 14th in the spring at Bristol. The team finished 22nd in final point standings. Now, in 86, Langley Racing had 11 different drivers share the driving duties of number 64 Ford. Eddie Bershwally made 5 starts for the team. His best start was 21st in the summer at Michigan, and his best finish was 15th in the summer at Pocono. Connie Saylor made five starts for, their, for Langley Racing. His best start was 33rd, and his best finish was 17th, both coming in the fall at Charlotte. Jimmy Hensley made three starts for the team, and his best start was 18th, and his best finish was 16th, both coming in the fall at Richmond. Pancho Carter made three starts for Langley, in his number 64 Kmart Ford. His best start was 24th three times in the spring at Daytona, Rockingham, and Atlanta. Rick Baldwin made two starts. His best start was 27th in the spring at Dover, and his best finish was 24th in the spring at North Booksboro. Now, Brian Baker, Tommy Gill, Doug Heverin, Rick McCray, Mike Potter, and Morgan Shepard all made one start for the team. The best finish was 13th in the spring at Richmond by Doug Heverin. Langley, Langley Racing ran their final season in 1987. Six different drivers made starts for the race team throughout the season. Cincinnati, Ohio's own Rodney Combs made 10 starts for the team. His best start was 24th in the summer at Michigan. 
and his best finish was 16th in the summer at Pocono. Now, Jerry Cranmer made five starts. His best start was 23rd, and his best finish was 20th, both coming in the spring at Martinsville. Trevor Boys made four starts also for the team. His best start was 24th in the fall at Dover, and his best finish was 24th twice in the fall at, Mar at North Wilkesboro and Richmond. Connie Sabler made four, four starts as well for Langley. His best start was 25th in the spring at Daytona, and his best finish was 23rd in the spring at Talladega. Curtis Markham made three starts. His best start was 20, 26th, and his best finish was 26th in the fall at Martinsville. Rick McRae made two starts. His best start was 24th, and his best finish was 26th, both coming in the spring at Riverside. The team shut down the conclusion of the 1987 NASCAR Cup Series season. The very final race Elmo Langley himself would ever drive in was the Battle of the NASCAR Legends race on the front stretch of the Charlotte Motor Speedway in 1991. It was a 40-lap race that actually only ended up being 30 due to the weather. Elmo took the lead to beat Kelly Yarbrough on the very last lap and won the race by about three feet. Langley served as the official pace car driver for all Cup Series events from April 1989 through November 1996. On November 21, 1996, Langley was taking the pace car out for a test drive during which he started feeling chest pains. Now he was taking the test drive out on the Suzuka Japan circuit, which we were having a special race overseas. Uh, after, at the after following the conclusion of the 1996 season. Now, uh, subsequently, he was taken to a local Suzuka Japan hospital where he was pronounced dead. It was a very sad day for the sport. Overall, Langley Racing had 46 different drivers make starts for them. They made 650 NASCAR Cup Series starts, scoring 0 poles, 0 wins, 29 top 5s, and 108 top 10s, with a best points finish of 5th twice in 1969 and 1971. Thanks for watching. Take care.